IHS, advancing decisions that advance the world. Nigeria's petroleum industry bill is a huge piece of legislation that really has been about 10 years in the making. What the government is hoping to do is actually introduce global standards to its industry, which is fundamental to Nigeria's foreign exchange reserves. Um, it earns over 95% from that. And so what the government has proposed is to change the fiscal regime and also the operational environment to try and encourage a greater variety of players. So far, Nigeria's oil and gas industry has really been dominated by international oil companies. And there's been very little room for domestic companies and so what the government wants to do is to try and broaden the participation and also introduce higher fiscal rates which the international oil companies are protesting against. One of the other things with the PIB is also for the government trying to bring about transparency into the industry. Nigeria has long suffered from so many allegations of corruption and backdoor deals. So the government's argument is that with this petroleum industry bill Everybody's coming to a one-stop shop. We can all see what other parties are doing. And therefore, there should be much more confidence in the industry, not only for the government, but also for the Nigerian population, which have really failed to benefit from it, and other stakeholders. Nigeria's petroleum industry bill is going to change the industry in a variety of ways. Um, as I was saying earlier, first of all, is going to increase the amount of tax that the government will be taking. Um, some international oil companies like Shell, ExxonMobil, are particularly worried about it for their deep water projects because they're fearing that the government's tax increase could rise from 92 to 98%. That's the first problem. Um, the second issue is also that the PIB is going to introduce what would be a gas fiscal framework, which is very important for Nigeria. Nigeria has 187 trillion cubic feet of gas, making it the world's seventh largest gas holder. And, but the problem is Nigeria has never really been able to commercialize upon that. Um, that's simply because the gas prices have been too poor for the companies to feel that they will benefit. And so what they prefer to do instead is export it as LNG to Europe and the US. So one of the related issues then in the PIB is to set up a gas price framework so that companies will feel incentivized to monetize the gas. The other issue, particularly for Nigeria, has been the problem in the Niger Delta, where there's been lots of pipeline bunkering. There's been um, a lot of violence, kidnapping of oil workers. And so that's affected Nigerian production, oil and gas production. Companies have pulled out. They found that the cost of repairing their infrastructure has been really high. That's dissuaded new investors from coming in because they're afraid of the environment. And there's been really little confidence in the security of what the government has been doing to address that issue. So one of the other provisions in the PIB is actually offering the host communities um, a stake in the oil and gas projects. And that would be around about 10%. There's different models which are being proposed at the moment, which um, are still being debated right now within the National Assembly. But effectively, what the government is hoping that would provide is the host, com the host communities with an incentive to actually make sure that they protect the installations, that they participate in the projects, um, and that way actually work closely with the international oil companies. Those that have been attacking, it's been down to criminals, militants, youth who are really frustrated that they don't have any jobs. And what they've always been complaining about is that the government is benefiting through corruption and the environments around them have been suffering through oil spills, through contamination of their food. And so in that sense, although Nigeria has been an oil producer for just over 50 years, there's actually been very little benefit on the ground. For the government, um, the PIB is also really important for actually transforming the national oil company, which is called the Nigerian Petroleum Corporation. And what it's going to do essentially is break it up because NMPC is in a position where it actually suffers a lot of the time in conflict of interest. It's actually an operator, but it sometimes also acts as a regulator. And so a lot of the time, especially when NMPC is working in partnership with the international oil companies like ExxonMobil and Shell, it finds that it's doing one thing on the one hand and having to enforce something on the other. So the PIB is actually going to then try and take those 
conflicting roles by setting up new institutions. So an upstream regulator, a downstream regulator, a midstream regulator, and give NMPC the standing to go to the capital markets to be able to get money for its projects. As that's been one of the main issues that international oil companies have been finding in Nigeria. They set up partnerships with NMPC and then find that NMPC can't actually put its fund of the money, its share of the money towards the projects. The main issue right now has been that the recent elections have taken place in Nigeria. And so in, with a new administration coming in, there's a lot of pressure for the National Assembly to pass the PIB as soon as possible before the new um, MPs take up their places. If not, there's the real potential that what you'll have to do is go back to scratch. And by that, I mean the different subcommittees starting to debate the bill clause by clause, people now asking the international oil companies to give them an update on what particular situations are. And all of that will then continue to put major projects on hold. Um, the international oil companies have warned the government that they're withholding about 100 billion worth of investment, which is so much money, um, particularly for deep water oil and gas projects. And of course, if they're holding back, then what that does is have implications potentially for Nigeria's production outlook. IHS, advancing decisions that advance the world.